This is Mr. Anderson for Kelly Community College going over the fourth page of the practice test. Let's go take a look at our first story problem. Um, this kind of fills in from the previous video which um, worked with another distance equals rate times time problem here. So we're going to fill this in, distance equals rate times time. And uh, we're going to start off with this problem, Sue. Sue's moped travels eight kilometers per hour faster than Joe's. And Sue travels 69 kilometers in the same time Joe travels 45. Find the speed of each person's moped. So the previous problem dealt with going up and down the river. This is dealing with two different people and their mopeds. It looks like Sue is traveling 69 kilometers in the same time that Joe travels 45 kilometers. So we don't know our time. We don't know how long it takes them, but we do know that the time is exactly the same because Sue travels in this in the same amount of time as Joe travels that. Now, the speeds are different, though, because you would expect Sue to be driving faster, and she's driving 8 kilometers per hour faster than Joe, so the rate is going to be x plus 8, and Joe's just going to be traveling x. Now, again, we're going to write our two equations here, 69 equals x plus 8 um, times t, and here we have 45 is equal to x times t. Now, to make this equation um, solvable, what we are going to do is we're going to get the t by itself. So in the first equation, we're going to divide both sides by x minus, or x plus 8, which gets the t alone. And here I'm going to, in the second equation, we're going to divide both sides by x, which gets the t alone. And what this means, then, is that um, this is a transitive property problem, which means that 69 over x plus 8 equals t and 45 over x equals t. Therefore, this is equal to this. You know, um, it, the transitive property says that if a is equal to b and a is equal to c, then b is equal to c. So we can just set these equal to each other because the time was the same. And now what we're going to do is to solve for x, we're going to clear the denominator. We're going to multiply by the lowest common denominator, which is x and x plus 8. And this is a kind of cross multiplication, but clearing the denominator strategy is going to work for every kind of uh, problem uh, with uh, denominators, not just the ones that can only be cross multiplied. So this is going to can't, or sorry, divide this to make 1. So this becomes 69 times x. And this uh, divides x and x, which makes this 45 times x plus 8. So if I distribute the 45, I get 69 is x is equal to 45x plus 360. And we're now going to solve for x. I'm going to subtract 45x from both sides. I'm going to rewrite my problem over here because 69 minus 45x is going to be 24x and that's equal to 360. Divide both sides by 24 and we get the speed of each we get the speed of Joe's moped and Joe's moped is going to be 15 kilometers per hour. All right, so 360 divided by 24 is 15. So Joe's speed is 15 kilometers per hour. That means Sue's speed is going to be 8 faster than that. So we just add 8 to both sides, or just add 8 to the 15, and that makes a total of 23 kilometers per hour. And there we go. That will give us what we need there. All right. Back to some of the just strict computational work, um, we're going to take a look at problem 14. Uh, this is a division problem, but you'll notice that this division problem is just dividing by a monomial. So the easiest way to do that is to take my 3a squared b and divide each of these by 3a squared b. Now, we can do this because this is a monomial, but in problems 15 and 16, these are not monomials, so therefore you are not going to be able to um, use this quick technique. Um, so we have 18 divided by 3, uh, which is going to make 6. 3 uh, a cubed divided by a squared, or 3 minus 2, which leaves me with just 1a. b to the fourth divided by b is just b cubed. And there's no letter c, so that's all we have there. Uh, 6 divided by 3 is going to give me 2. a squared divided by a squared is 1. b cubed divided by b is just b squared, 
and there's no c squared, so we'll just put the c squared there. In our final problem, we got 12 divided by 3, which is 4. A squared divided by A squared is 1, and B divided by B is 1, so 4 times 1 times 1 is just 4. And that's our answer to problem 14. Now in problem 15, we have to use long division. And since that number right here is a 2, we have to use long division and not synthetic division. It's not an option for us. So inside here, we're going to go 6x cubed minus 11x squared plus 11x minus 2. I was careful to make sure that there were no powers skipped, x cubed, x squared, x, and 2, and on the outside I'll have 2x minus 3. Now the first question I'm going to ask is, how many terms are here? And the answer is 2. So we're going to start right here at the arrow. Now, what do I have to multiply my 2x to make it equal to 6x cubed? And the answer there is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, and x squared. Uh, x squared times x is x cubed. Now this 3x squared is going to be multiplied by this binomial. And so that's going to give me 6x cubed, and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9x squared. Now I'm going to subtract. So to subtract, I'm going to do some swipe swipe, and I'm going to quickly change colors for this. All right, so I'm going to make this into a minus, and I'm make this into a plus to show my subtraction step here. And go back to blue. And what will happen is that the first, the 6x cubes will simplify to 0, and this will make a negative 2x squared. And then we'll drop down the 11x. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, what am I going to get my 2x to look like to make it into a negative 2x squared? Well, I'm going to multiply by a negative x. And this negative x is going to get multiplied by this binomial. Negative times 2 is negative 2. Negative x times x is going to be my x squared. That's good. I've got a perfect match. Negative x times 3. Negative 3 is going to be positive 3x. Now I'm going to go switch colors here to go to my um, subtraction step. So this turns into a plus, and this changes to a minus. And let me click back into blue, noticing that I'm going to have to probably write a little smaller to get to the end here before I run into problem 16. All right, running out of room. So this is going to make 0, and this is going to make a positive 8x, because 11 minus 3 is 8x. And then we're going to put minus 2. All right, for my last part of the problem here, what am I going to multiply my 2x to make it look like 8x? Well, I'm going to multiply it by 4. This 4 is going to get multiplied by this binomial. 4 times 2x is 8x, and 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Go to my subtraction step and change colors to show you that. I'm going to have a negative 8x and a positive 12. All right, so with that in mind, going back to blue here, um, I'm going to have a remainder. And that remainder is going to give me a 10. Now, how will I write my answer? You're going to write your, new, your top of this divisor bar there, like so. And then your remainder has to be written as a fraction of 10 over 2x minus 3. So you're taking what's on top of the bar there and adding your remainder divided by the part below, which is what you were dividing by. Now, do not put an R10. That is uh, not at our level of, of work here. We need to have you write down this form of answer if you have a remainder. Okay, two more problems to go. Now, in problem number 16, you can use synthetic division to solve this problem. And I'm going to show you how to set up your synthetic division problem. First of all, your number that you're trying to see um, when this hits the ground or when this crosses the x-axis is positive 2. So you make sure you take the... Um, now, actually, if we change these to x's, it'd be when it hits the ground. But since this is y's, this is when it um, hits the y-axis. So my question to you here is that we are going to um, take a look here at the opposite value, not negative 2. So make sure this is a 2 and not a negative 2. I will be checking for that on the test. And then from here we're going to put our coefficients in. This is for our y cubed. There is no y squared here. Notice that there is no y squared, so we have to put a 0 as a placeholder there. Then negative 3, and then positive 10. 
All right, so let's go and do our synthetic division here. We drop the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Then we drop these two. 0 and 2 make 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Add these together here. This makes a positive 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Add these together, which makes our remainder of 12. So how would I write my answer? You can't just leave your answer like this. You start off with the 1, 2, and 1, and that's 1y squared, 1 fewer power than we started with, plus 2y plus 1, with a remainder of 12 divided by y minus 2. So to review here, you are taking your 1, 2, 1, and you're lowering the power by 1 because we divided by y. So the power of y cubed gets dropped to y squared, and everything drops a power. The remainder has to be written as a fraction divided by do 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 this here at the end. Now, for problem number 17, we are using synthetic division to find when f is when f of you know what's the answer when we plug 4 into x. Now you have to solve the problem this way. You notice that the 4 is exactly the same as you see over here because we're actually finding when it, is it 4. And now we're going to go through our problem again. This is 5, this is negative 7. Notice there's no x squared here and so that's going to be a 0. Make sure to put the space holder in there. Then we put a 3 and then a negative 9. Now these numbers are going to get pretty big here so make, make sure to have your calculator around. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to drop the 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 in the negative 7 is 13. 4 times 13 is going to be 52. 0 and 52 is 52. 4 times 52, 208. 208 and 3 is 211. And 4 times 211 is 844. Negative 9 plus 844 is the remainder of 835. Now make sure that you do not write your answer in the form that we did above, because what we're trying to find is if we plug 4 in for my x, what's my f of x going to be, or what's my y going to be, and it's going to be 835. This is the format of the answer I need here, and this is the format of the answer I need here. This shows me that you know what you're actually you know, talking about here. Here we're doing synthetic division, where we're trying to find out what, what the answer and possible remainder is. And here I'm trying to say, if I plug 4 in for my x, what do I get? Please note that you could have got received the same answer if you did f you know, 4 into each of the values of x in the problem. Arguably, this could be the shorter problem. However, this test requires you to use synthetic division. See the instructions. So it, since it says use synthetic division, you must um, use synthetic division. But this is a great way to check your answer on this part of the test. All right, thanks for watching.